let's talk about Disney a little bit more, though, because Ugh. I do think the, the, the yes, that little crying, that's the soundbite of the week. Jen Psaki. I mean, it's either her or President Biden not understanding the difference between what's happening at the border and what's happening with his appeal of his loss on the mask mandate, um, which we can also get to. But the Jen Psaki thing I haven't played yet, literally in tears over what's happening with Ron DeSantis and and this bill, well, now it's law down in Florida, that stands up for parental rights and says you cannot, in the instruction of very young children, push sexual identity or gender identity lessons until they get to past third grade. And then you can then you can talk about it in class in an appropriate way. It doesn't say you can't talk about it. It doesn't say if the child says, what do you mean your partner? You're not allowed to say, oh, I have a gay husband. You know, I'm, I'm gay and I have a husband. You, th- it doesn't say any of that. It says in, in the instruction, you shouldn't be yeah. pushing gender identity and sexual identity at K through three. Um, this is how Jen Psaki reacts to that in this interview she did in this podcast. Listen. This is a political wedge issue and an attempt to win a culture war. And they're doing that in a way that is harsh and cruel uh, to a community of kids, especially. I'm, I'm like going to get emo- uh, I'm going to get emotional about this issue because I just it's horrible. But uh, but, you know, it's it's like kids who are bullied and the, 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 like all these leaders are, are taking steps to hurt them and hurt their lives and hurt their families. And you look at some of these laws in these states and it is going after parents who are in loving relationships who have kids. It's completely outrageous. OK, going after <laughs> for the listening audience, he was now banging his head against his desk. Well, first, I mean, she just shouldn't be sitting in front of a white background. It's like nature's evil camouflage. <laughs> what do you mean? It's like the red hair. I just, she's incredibly pale and she has no soul. Look, look. <laughs> she also went on to talk about tra- there's no such thing as transgender children. OK, let's be clear about that. It does. It's not a thing. Transgender children, if they are below the age of consenting to sexual decisions, they are below the age of consenting to decisions medically that would affect them sexually for the rest of their lives. You know what I didn't know, Megan Kelly, about my second grade teacher? Hmm. Her first name, let alone her scissor <laughs> sister. Does anyone actually remember walking up like, oh, yeah, well, thank you, Mr. J- Johnson. Here's my book report. By the way, who are you banging today? When these <laughs> teachers talk about how am I supposed to discuss, what do I tell my students about my uh, my same sex husband or wife? How about nothing? How about nothing? <laughs> That's a human rights violation now. And by the way, the bill doesn't even say that. I would have no problem if it did say, keep your keep your sex life to yourself. Don't discuss it with our kids, whether you're mm-hmm. straight or gay. But it doesn't. It just says you will not indoctrinate kindergarten yeah. through third grade on gender identity where it could not be less age appropriate. Mm-hmm. Remember when people said it was a straw man when we said they're going to go after your kids? Here we are. Yeah. And they said, yeah, they said they weren't doing it. It's like, well, if you're not doing it, then why do you care that it's being official, that you're not allowed to do it in instruction, not in conversation, not in passing in the instruction that you offer to my kindergartner? I don't want to hear anything about any of this. If Doug and I want to talk to our children about that, we'll do it. We'll do it in an appropriate age and an appropriate way. But to to me, the thing that jumps out about this is... The irony, Stephen, of Jen Psaki, who works for this administration to talk about uh, the abuse of children and using them in a political culture war. It's like, are you kidding me? You you just put masks on three year olds for years. The people least at risk from covid and you insisted that they keep them on and that they eat outside and that they sit in the rain and that they stay six feet away from one another and that they get a vaccine they don't need when they're over five years old uh, to protect them to protect them from a risk that is not real for that age group. And you want to talk to me about What's good for children? You, you, the administration that's now paving the way for top surgery for teenagers and for them to be able to get cross-gender hormones without their parents knowing, and then you want to cry about the abuse the Republican Party is putting on your child? Spare me. Spare me. Yeah. No, I think, look, I don't. I often try to not attribute to um, malice what can be attributed to uh, ignorance. This, this is evil stuff. I guess I can say this is evil, evil shit when you're talking about not only hormone replacement therapy for not just teenagers, but uh, if you look at if they had their way unfettered, that's always what I tell people is, OK, you have to look at what each political party would have if there were no blockades, if they had a completely unfettered. Well, do you doubt for a second when we were talking about covid that the Democrats would have us in a similar lockdown to Australia? No, of course not, because they proposed that. That's what they wanted. And there are checks and balances that 
pull them back a little bit. If the left had what they wanted unfettered, you would have to allow your six-year-old to go on puberty blockers uh, or potentially be on the route to uh, uh, an actual sex change operation or forfeit your right to your children as taken by the state because they believe it's child abuse to not transition your child. This is the mainstream platform of the left. People need to understand that. People might point to some exceptions, but not the platform of the DNC. I can't think of something more evil than that. And really, when you look at their guiding North Star, and I'm speaking in a generality here, but I'm using the DNC as the example, uh, it all ultimately points to more power of the state. Mm. And here's something else, you know, too. I, I don't think it requires a conspiracy theorist to say, you know, same sex marriage happened, right? That was the big push. And you were back then you were a Nazi if you didn't want two guys to get married. Okay, whatever. Once that happened, okay, same sex marriage, they have it. You have it now. Yeah, the first president who actually went into office who was pro same sex marriage, Donald Trump, uh, ever, right? Barack Obama was against it until mm -hmm. he was for it. So, uh, do you think all these people at organizations like GLAD, do you think they're going to forfeit all these organizations, the hundreds of millions of dollars? No, they have to advocate for something else. And so they had to push for, uh, 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 you know, men taking a dump in the women's bathroom at Target. OK, fine. <laughs> you have that now. There's really nowhere else to go. And there are still giant nonprofits with huge, with vast swaths of influence. What do they do? What do they fight for? They have to go back to the private sector and work for a living. That's not going to happen. And so right now we're looking at children on puberty blockers. Right. We're looking at men beating the hell out of women. In, in biological men beating the hell out of women in their own sports, what is next? And I think mm -hmm. that's a very important question. It's not a logical fallacy to say a slippery slope. We are on a slope period. If the left has their way on this. I think it's a fascinating where, question. Because I've talked to a lot of gay and lesbian friends who have said, like, I don't totally get why the T is at the end of LGBT you know, and the Q and all right. like the interests aren't necessarily aligned. And in fact, if you look at like the trans activists, like the crazy trans and not like normal, like whatever, but the crazy trans activists are so vicious and they, they they're basically kind of doing conversion therapy on young gay men instead of you're not gay, you're trans, you're secretly a girl. It's better to be trans than to be queer than to be than to be gay. Just just say that you're a girl and then you can get rid of that whole gay thing and we're seeing more and more of this abigail schreier writes about it in her book i've had lots of people on the show talking about it so there is a question about whether the interests of the gay community are aligned in the way that glad would have us believe and whether glad's right. lost the the real scope of its original mission um the other thing i wanted to mention to you on the jen Psaki thing is she, she's talking about she doesn't like the kids being used in a political culture war and she, what she really doesn't like is is can you believe these 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 lawmakers going against these parents who only want what's best for their child hello you were the people who sicked the doj on parents who were trying to pro protect their children from this crazy race essentialism in their class with the white kids being told they're inherently bad and evil and the black kids being told they're inherently inferior and weak like yeah. you were the one who wanted to have Mer merrick garland arrest and investigate the parents for trying to stand up against that nonsense again like the nerve yeah. No, you know what else, too? This also brings us to the scientific issue while we're talking about children, because, again, this is there, there are not uh, these are not isolated incidences, right? Uh, incidents of children, for example, wanting to be on puberty blockers. And that is the mainstream platform. By the way, I was at a Vermont town hall, I believe, four years ago, five years ago, where they were teaching us this was a, this was a undercover right with cameras uh how to use uh medicaid i don't remember if it was medicare or medicaid but how to also use our insurance to get our children on puberty blockers and how to to get insurance to pay for example for for breast surgery for male to female trend. children by the way it was removed from youtube it was removed from youtube even though it was a public town hall but there were only five people who actually showed up so even at the forefront of this war for a long time when we're talking about science and this is what I think really bothers a lot of Americans is, OK, well, for example, I have a, a good friend right now um, who uh, is just was diagnosed with breast cancer and she has to do a double mastectomy. This whole it's oh. terrible, but she's going to be fine. What's the first thing they do with women right after if they do double mastectomy or radiation? One of the first things they do if they're dealing with breast cancer is some kind of aromatase inhibitor, some kind of an estrogen blocker, right? People know about, it's a Rimadex, sometimes it's clomiphene citrate. These are drugs that people will be familiar with. Why? Because high estrogen levels in women uh, can be cancerogenic. We know that these can actually be, create a pro-cancer environment. There is no doubt, Megan, none whatsoever, 
that in men, it is even more catastrophic. So when we say, well, we know the science is very clear that if someone has breast cancer, if a woman has high estrogen levels, we need to try and keep that in check as they're recovering from some kind of a breast cancer. Uh, and we know that with men who have cancer, we need to keep that in check because men naturally don't have high estrogen levels. We know this. This is science. When injected directly into the buttocks of a six-year-old, however, we don't have any long-term studies. Well, can you make an inference, asshole? Can you do that? I don't know. Where, where, where did science go right out the window? And it does. It pisses me off. And I think it pisses yeah. a lot of Americans off. And this is also why they why there's mistrust in the, the scientific institutions. Well, is that our fault? Is that our fault when you said that popping an estrogen pellet into an eight year old is appropriate and the science is still out when we know what it does to the male body? Black Rifle Coffee Company is a veteran founded company serving premium coffee to people who love America. They develop their explosive roast profiles with the same mission focus learned as military members serving this great country. And in 2021, Black Rifle Coffee donated over 100,000 bags of coffee, that's 2.1 million cups of coffee, to first responders, law enforcement, and active duty military members. So you know that with every purchase you make, Black Rifle gives back. What other coffee company does that, right? Black Rifle Coffee imports high-quality coffee beans from Colombia and Brazil, and they roast them five days a week at their facilities here in the USA, in Manchester, Tennessee, and Salt Lake City, Utah, to be exact. And that means you get the freshest coffee possible, no matter where you live. The best way to enjoy Black Rifle's freedom-filled coffee is with the Black Rifle Coffee Club. When you join the club, your brew of choice is roasted, packaged, and shipped free to your door on your schedule. How many times have you been like, where's the coffee? Oh, I forgot to get it. And that's one thing you don't want to be out of. And the coffee club solves that. You buy it at blackriflecoffee.com. Use the code MK at checkout for 20% off your purchase and your first coffee club order. That's blackriflecoffee.com slash MK. Black Rifle Coffee, America's coffee. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.